Jerry Grimm comes out and I go, Whoo. I'm gonna have to make a whole other separate video about everything that was awful about this because I, I feel like I would literally I'll end up making like a three hour um, video otherwise but that was atrocious it was absolutely atrocious Danny had the potential to be the worst villain that we'd ever seen on the show a genocidal maniac with almost overwhelming power and strength and we get 20 minutes i absolutely hated the way that they set up john killing her i thought it was completely contrived absolutely awful awfully written but there was no other way it could have been written better by this point it's like all of the damage was done by now you can't to have to expect me to believe that like john has seen her be genocidal and the thing that changes his mind is what is a single conversation with Tyrion, and then for him to be like you're my queen you'll always be my queen Ki actually kiss her and stab her while he's doing it i think is actually disgusting i think i, I really absolutely i cannot believe well i can believe because i know it's just two men in a writing room that is absolutely disgusting and i will not defend that to anybody it's disgusting. I really felt Drogon's rage because at that moment, that's exactly how I felt. So for me, the most powerful moment of this episode was Drogon's reaction to Danny dying. Still sad about it. That was absolutely heartbreaking. So, you know, at least one character stayed true to herself, although there's no way Drogon wouldn't have burnt John to ash that Drogon would have killed John. I did like that he picked her up in his foot and took her away because that allows me to write my own fanfiction ending which is Drogon the boss took Danny straight to the Red Priestesses of Ashai. They've already resurrected her and she's gonna come back and burn that place to the fucking ground and I'm gonna applaud this time because these people are all shits. And then we have that ridiculous council where they try and make it out as if the fact that they just didn't want to kill Tyrion off and they wanted to give him a happy ending is legitimised by saying, oh, he's made many mistakes, he's going to fix them. No, it's just some privilege. It's okay. Tyrion can kill his, kill his girlfriend, kill his dad, betray his queen, you know, blow up tens of thousands of people with wildfire. That's fine. It's just, oh my god. It's absolutely, it's an abomination of a fucking episode, but a, an abomination of a season. Um, just melodramatic bullshit. And also completely inconsistent. So we're supposed to believe it's almost like Bran was always destined. All of these things had to happen to create this world. Well, in that case, how is that any different to what, they're saying Daenerys was mad for it. It's the same fucking argument. But it's different because their move, their actions were passive. They just allowed it to happen. It's just... Fucking... And like, why... Why is the North any more deserving of being free than any of the other areas? Why? They haven't been free any longer than any of the other areas. They knelt with everyone else to Aegon. Everyone else was free before that too. It's just bullshit. They're just rewriting the history of Westeros now. Literally in front of our eyes. And I can't just sit there and nod along. It's so ridiculous. And I was forced into literally like almost like PTSD laughter. At Bran being voted king. So it's just like this is utterly ridiculous. So now we're going to have a, a rule with zero empathy. Who doesn't know how to talk to people. Who doesn't appreciate. The experience of being a person. 
who failed to act in any meaningful way before or during any of it. Well, that was great. My uh, computer decided to crash right, right in the middle of my review. I think even the computer gave up on that episode. So I've had a bit of time. I've actually rewatched the episode. I've done the long edit. Um, so I've sort of watched it kind of two, two to three times at this point. And um, I, I don't actually feel any differently than I did after the first time watching it. It's an episode of television that managed to both infuriate me and bore me. I thought it was kind of soporifically um, dull for almost the entire last half. <laughs> the, the, once Daenerys had died... It just became Disney with these ridiculously um, gilded outcomes. Oh, it was so bad. It was just so bad. And I think the, the thing that makes it worse for, worse for me is I think actually you could have written this in a way that was just so much better. By really of developing Daenerys' descent into madness... And by the way, that's not done with a bit of foreshadowing and then just ridiculously set up events to take things from her to try and create a pretext for her going mad while never actually showing her going mad. I mean, actually, for example, we could have had her losing in Marine and her resentment to the people for not standing with her in her attempt to liberate them actually turning her hostile to subjects and have her feel like she was saving them in spite of themselves and that sending her into a kind of weird madness you know taking on the iron islands as allies but not demanding anything about no more re roving raving <laughs> raping or you know all of that stuff and you know you could have had her advisor saying is this the best alliance is this what we really wanted in our new world and and her you know clinging to her ideas and saying no it's not about that it's about you know you could have had you know 10 or 15 capitulations to her supposed values in favor of power <clears throat> and watched an awful decline during that period you know over a season over two seasons that would have us pulling away from her and realizing that she wasn't fighting for those principles and that actually her love of people had become a, a deep hatred and contempt for people so that the point where she was killed she could have really been taken out powerfully i don't believe for a second that the john snow that we've known through all of these seasons would have watched a genocide would have watched surrendered soldiers butchered and been going oh you know you don't know uh, what you would have done in that situation that's just it's just not Jon Snow it's just ridiculous and and I think it was because the 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 killing scene that they had devised is so foul in and of itself they had to make it like it was like his only option at, at that point and so we could then celebrate it because we go well he really didn't want to do it he didn't want to do it he, he defended her and then he realized oh she's a, she's a monster she's just it's just so lazy um and then of course another way that you could have subverted expectations is you would have spent all that time invested in the idea that daenerys was the true evil in the kingdom and she and i'm almost thinking i can't even imagine a way that that we're gonna kill her and you could have had Arya kill her rather than Arya kill the Night King, have had Jon kill the Night King. And then have had Arya use those assassin skills on Daenerys, which would have been an amazing kill. Because by that point, we'd have fucking hated Daenerys for the fact that she'd taken great principles and just abused them mercilessly and been responsible for so much carnage. And she'd already broken our hearts. So we would really want her to go. But we would have thought... There was no possible way that she was going to be defeated. And then <clears throat> in goes Arya and, and, and gets the kill, which would have been a much better finishing arc for Arya. Imagine how, our elation, that feeling of like, yeah, we did it. And then 
we get, you know, say John has been killed, you know, Daenerys kills John in the process, so there isn't even a John. There's not an option. And so they end up going the Bran route, because for all of the reasons they've given, even, even though it's bullshit, we could have been sitting there going, oh, I, don't, I don't know, what, why are they doing this? I guess he's the last option, I mean, you know, I don't know. And then we realise that Bran, because that's what's happened, is Bran has put all of these events in place. You know, he told John what he told him to get him to go north of the wall, which gave the Night King a dragon, which meant the Night King could come below the wall. He sent Sam in to tell John the news of his parentage at the worst possible moment when he knew that Sam had turned against Daenerys and would therefore say begin working on John to revise bending the knee and to go against Daenerys. He also knew that the information would rile Sansa, who wants an independent north, so he could rely on Sansa to little finger inside of Daenerys's council and provoke subsequent events, which would have played out slightly differently, but ultimately along along the same timeline by that point, because we've already got bad Daenerys by this point. So this final burning of King's Landing would not have been the beginning of the Mad Queen. It would have been the final awful act of of the Mad Queen. Us as an audience would then be forced to realise, oh my God, this was, Bran enabled all of this. Bran is the ultimate little finger and not even Bran, but the three-eyed raven, this thousands and thousands of years old spirit who's, you know, imbued with the children of the forest. And it could even have been a final revenge of the children of the forest to, to create the demise of man and take back the Seven Kingdoms for themselves, you know, take back the continent of Westeros for themselves. That would have been one hell of a ride. Do you imagine season six, seven, eight, nine, and ten all being this build up of um, you know, the the Mad Queen of Daenerys, the defeat, the instalment of Bran, and then we could have had a li- maybe a little bit of time even watching what Bran did at that point. And that would have been terrifying. I w- would it have been an ending that left me happy? No, but it would have left me ecstatic with the writing, absolutely ecstatic with the telling of this story, of the complexity of, you know, all of the questions that, that were asked. And it would have also stayed much truer, I think, to the prophecies and the the kind of underlying, the genuine subversion of expectations that was happening in the earlier parts of the show, where there was subversion, but it, it made sense. And it wasn't just based on, you know, one vision and a, and a couple of Mardi conversations, which is essentially what the Mad Queen came down to. So I just, and, and what was so awful about this ending for me was that it actually left me empty. I think I should have been feeling lots of feelings for the last half. And I, and I wasn't, I was bored for, for the majority of it. Unbelievable amounts of time of people just wandering around making faces really stilted dialogue the the scene with Brienne and Jamie just was just awful the idea that you know, Jamie now goes down in the history books as, as some kind of a hero oh my god and, and I could have lived with that if it wasn't the fact that it was going to be Brienne that that did that for him it just really leaves a, a kind of sour sort of a taste in my mouth and just the North being independent makes absolutely no sense if Dorne aren't and if the Iron Islands aren't. It literally makes no sense. And and the excuse they gave in the show makes no sense. It's it's not only contrary to the history and lore, you know, that derives from the books, it, it contra it contradicts the history of the show. We already know that Dorne, you know, are unbowed, unbent, unbroken. We know that history of Dawn from the show is just left, you know, know what the Prince of Dawn doesn't say, hang on, look, give Sansa a look when she says it. It's like, what are you talking about? You know, while you guys were, were bending the knee around the fields of fire, we, we were not. You know, the Iron Islands has rebelled a whole bunch of times. They're apparently fine being in the, being in the Six Kingdoms. <laughs> it just doesn't make any sense. You know, and ultimately this idea of, you know, Sansa is like liberating the North and get, you know, giving the North their freedom and then ending it with the North literally bending their knee, literally kneeling one by one 
to Queen Sansa. No one sees a contradiction in that. All of the contradictory logic of this episode, you know, the idea that it's fine for Bran to see all of this going on, do nothing but help it along. He's right for the kingdom because, well, we got Queen Sansa and, you know, Arya got to go on a boat. <laughs> Just go off on a boat. Um, John ends up, you know, north of the wall with his dire wolf and his bestie and you know, able to renounce any sense of duty, which is kind of what he's been doing the whole show. So they kind of weirdly got their ways in in really unsatisfying ways because that's where they all started. Sansa always wanted to be queen. Arya always wanted to be independent. John never wanted um, to, to be a politician or play any kind of, you know, part in in that stuff. So what was the point? everyone just kind of ended up back where they were at the beginning and you know the idea that making Tyrion the hand of a king is a, is a punishment is nonsense how many times was Tyrion given the opportunity to run away and start a new life you know by Shay by when he fled um the, the seven kingdoms having been accused falsely of murdering joffrey and the saddest we've ever seen Tyrion is when he is without the power to scheme and plot and so that was not that was not a punishment any by any stretch of the imagination and it was also a reward for failure because he is the worst hand of all time ever um he did nothing but undermine danny's rule virtually from the get-go certainly from the point they hit Westeros every time he had a decision to make he made the wrong one right up until the end whatever way you view this you know if you think oh Danny was always a mad queen well then Tyrion was an idiot for for having allied himself with her so yeah awful and it really undermines the rewatch as well which I think is the thing that I've I'm seeing is most upsetting for fans because so much of the dramatic tension and the reason for continuing to watch was eliminated in these final three episodes because there were almost every prophecy other than when you play the game of thrones you win or you die there is no middle ground that's the only thing that came true in this whole show john's parentage was nothing other than a plot device to break apart him and Danny and drive her mad it, it meant nothing I'm not a fan of rape as character development so I'm quite disappointed that the show did that instead of actually in the books where Sansa gains her power when she's in the Vale she be you know she gets into politics in the Vale and she builds alliances and it's an incredible storyline of, of a girl becoming a woman through actualizing you know her intelligence no she was just treated like shit <laughs> for a long time and then woke up one day and decided that she wasn't going to take it anymore. I'm also kind of sad about the the Red Priestesses not playing any further role. I almost want a whole sequel show to this where Danny is actually brought back to life by the Red Priestesses and is now all the more powerful. And Bran is actually this evil... <laughs> dictator of the seven kingdoms of the six plus the independent north and you know how that would all go down never gonna happen but it would be more interesting than, than what we just got served up so yeah I, i'm really really sad that the show took the shortcuts that it took in this this final season and in retrospect seeing how much of the build-up from really season six was just nonsense really nonsense building to nonsense um so really i'm i'm what i'm grateful to the show for is that you know the cinematography only ever got better special effects only ever got better the acting only ever got better i mean pretty much everyone's best season in terms of the acting i mean particularly amelia clark who i felt actually in early seasons her and kit arrington both were probably the weakest performers despite being kind of billed as as two of the main characters and watching those two grow as actors has been an absolute delight 
it just I thought Amelia Clark brought so much to this. So much it partic- Amelia Clark for me stole the show in this final season. And I'm going to be disappointed to hear people say that B- Peter Dinklage did because I actually think he was served such horrific lines, particularly in this last episode. I've never, I can't remember ever watching this show and being pulled out of the drama by really terrible writing. I think the only time it happened in dialogue, so this happened twice, it happened in the spoils of war, which I wasn't reacting then, but the spoils of war when Jamie just sort of suddenly suddenly the water was really deep even though we'd seen the horse run along it wasn't and then just popping up at the the next episode i was like oh my god that that was a really weak way to end what i felt was a really great episode up until that point so i've always kind of thought oh i I wish they'd come up with something better had the bravery to just kill jamie off or never had you know they wanted every it's like they wanted to have their cake and eat it they wanted us to have this moment of terror thinking that Jamie was dead only for him to not not be dead and and I feel like one of the great things about Game of Thrones is they didn't do those trick deaths but they started to in later seasons you know Tyrion being dragged down by the stone man and then magically he's fine and I really I think trick deaths is is really lame I, I think it's a writing trick don't don't do that and the and the other time was um, obviously the infamous you you want a good girl but you need a bad pussy which is just the worst one of the worst lines of the show has been top this this episode actually so you know across all of those seasons to just have two you know two moments where you go um, so I was like and I know there are other people who feel way more strongly than me about this I may well be sat there going what are you kidding um, but that that's what I mean I'm not like I haven't been harsh on this show the whole time. I've loved so much of this show. And, and what I realised in episode five was I loved it because I felt like I literally believed in it so much that I felt it couldn't be possible that the direction they looked like they were taking the show in was actually going to be it. Because I knew they didn't have time and I knew that the way they were attempting to execute it was clumsy, riddled with the worst sort of tropes about mental health, about women being angry or asserting themselves. It was just re- awful, awful stuff. And the sidelining of John and Tyrion being so stupid, it became laughable. I thought this is all going to turn around because you know, Tyrion must be betraying Danny. Um, you know, there's going to be a big moment and we're going to realise that actually, you know, Danny's been right all along you know she's she's not just paranoid people are out to get her and that is what happened but then they use that as the pretext for her going mad so it just undermined itself and so that's why my frustration is even greater than it might have been had I turned on the show earlier because it almost feels like my faith in in the writers has, has, has been you know unwarranted they've sort of banked on people giving them pass after pass after pass for the sake of, of enjoyment um and entertainment and, and as i always say it's not it's not the job of viewers of a show to love it unquestioningly it always cracks me up when people just just let them tell the story they're telling no um that's you know it's, it's if, if we're going to call this the greatest show ever like that's not us just watching and letting them tell it we're we're watching the story they're telling and we're saying this is told so well it's so immaculately written it's so beautifully told that we you know you warrant making this much money having this much attention having this reputation attached to creating such a fantastic show so that you have to have the other side if you then become lazy and make the sorts of decisions which have literally provoke your viewers offend them um it's right for viewers to to question that and say hang on a minute you sold us this and uh we bought it and then when we opened the box we just saw a giant turd inside of it (laughs) and (laughs) well well it's absolutely your right to make that turd um it's not beholden upon me to sniff it and tell you that it smells of roses and and that's the situation i think a lot of fans are in 
are going to be in for a long time with this because it's not just the first wave of fans. You could have people that discover this show over the years and get every bit as invested in it as we have done, only to be quite bitterly disappointed by the ending. And obviously there will be people that just enjoyed this. They're not going to question it. They're just watching it in a kind of very superficial way and go, wow, bang, boom, phew, that was real. Oh, God, everything good. Oh, my God. Oh, the Starks won. I always love the Starks. And that's fine. But, um, you know, if I wanted that, I'd go and watch Transformers. If I, if I want a show that just says these are the goodies, these are the baddies, um, the goodies went, yeah. Doesn't matter how they won. Doesn't matter that we used a whole bunch of plot contrivances. Um, doesn't matter that the dialogue is stilted and the characters behave in contrary ways at any given point just to get us to a predetermined ending. Oh, it was great. It's what a ride. Just blew my, blew my hair back. Like that, you know, and I I love awful shows and awful films. You know, I'm, I'm not a snob when it comes to this stuff. I can enjoy stuff that is, you know, um, just tap, you know, just sort of put put together tap, but but done in a really sort of big way. That's fine, but that wasn't what we were sold with Game of Thrones. That's not the show I've been watching, and it's not. I would never call any of those shows I feel that way about all the films the greatest um, TV show I've made or the greatest film ever made. I just go, oh, I really love that film. I know it was toffee, but I I just I know every time I watch it, I love it. And I think that's the difference that people different positions that people are in now and yeah so it's a, it, and it's just a sad end when you've had something that really had the capacity to be the greatest show ever made by a mile like if they have i think stuck to 10 seasons had 10 episodes in each season you could even had 10 feature length episodes in the, in the final season i uh, unquestioningly with the great writing and that wouldn't have been new because we've known the show have great writing. This could have been the greatest show ever made. Um, and I can't say that now. It's not the greatest show ever made because you have to include where the story went and how it got there in the end. So while I understand people who go off oh, three bad episodes or three mediocre episodes, you know, Breaking Bad never had three mediocre episodes. It just didn't. Um, neither did The Wire. Um, both shows that, that stayed true for me to their origin story. I never felt flipped on by Breaking Bad, uh, even though I felt challenged. It, it stayed crisp and beautiful right through to the end. So I will have to default back to Breaking Bad now as the, the greatest TV show ever, even though Game of Thrones for so many seasons was so much better to me, but it just nosed I <laughs> some face planted and then collapsed and then a building fell on it and squished it. Unlike Arya Stark. So yeah, that's that's kind of where I've left off. I'm sort of weirdly relieved that that's now over and we can kind of move on from it and go to other things. Um, and just thank goodness that I'm reacting to The Expanse right now because that show is absolutely fantastic. So thank you, Belinda, for recommending that show to me. Thank you, Dan. Thank you to all the patrons and the subscribers that recommended that show. And the next live show coming up, I think on June 5th, we have the beginning of The Handmaid's Tale. That's the show I'm going to react, be reacting to next as my live show. And I'll continue with my reactions to The Expanse. I will see you for The Handmaid's Tale and I will see you for The Expanse. Thank you so much to everyone for following me through this final season of Game of Thrones. So many of you have kept me sane in the comment section <laughs> um, by just, just your words of support, your words of appreciation and, um, and being able to share this experience with you, which I think has been really tough for many of us who have been fans of the show for so long and fans of the book for even longer. Um, so it's been what has been great about this is actually sharing that with you guys and, and having that sort of conversation about what is good writing and, and why this isn't it and what, what we can hope to gain in future series. And that's been fantastic, not even to mention the memes. Uh, they, the memes around Game of Thrones right now are, are 
absolutely fantastic they're really really worth checking out i'm sure all of you have already done this you've been on facebook you've been on twitter you've been on instagram you've seen all that stuff but yeah so until the next time bye bye